All right, chapter two, session one. Algebra two, we're going to be talking about relations. Okay. A lot of you have already experienced some type of relation, whether it be a relationship already in your life. You have had boyfriends and or girlfriends since what second grade? Okay. We're going to be talking about relations, but not necessarily relationships like you know them today. We're going to be talking about mathematical relations. Now, they're not very different from the relationships that you have. Okay, or that you are familiar with. Okay, relations in math is just a set of pairs of inputs and outputs. Okay, it's just basically two things that are connected. Okay, when you're in a relationship with someone else, you're basically two people that are connected. That's all we have when we talk about mathematical relations. Just two numbers that are related to each other in some way, whether it's whether they like each other or they're whatever together. It's a relation. Now, in relations, we have what's called the input and the output. Okay, we have the male and the female, or we have the dog and the cat, whatever. You have two relationships, okay, two things with that relationship. The first one is called the input, the second one is called the output, okay. The input is the x values and the output is the y values, okay. The x values are independent, okay. The x values are independent. You can choose any x value you want. So if you, we'll call the x values right now, we'll call those the females in this video, okay? We're going to have a bunch of girls. We'll put a bunch of curly hair out there. We're going to have a bunch of girls, okay? We'll call them the independent variable, okay? They get to choose whatever dependent or x, y value that they want down here. They've got all these dudes, okay? Well, here's all the dudes. They can choose whatever they want, but they cannot choose more than one. Okay, because you can't date more than one person. Okay, they cannot choose more than one. Okay, so you have one girl who can only date one guy. So she can only choose one guy who is the output. A guy doesn't want to choose the girl in this type of relation, in a math, math relation. Dependent variables cannot choose independent. Only independent can choose dependent. If you're still confused, that's okay. We'll, we'll come back to it. Different ways that we describe relations in math is through ordered pairs. You guys are familiar with ordered pairs. We graph them. Okay. We, that's a type of relation. Okay. Three, negative four, three, negative one, four, negative one, four, three. Those numbers are related. Okay. There is some sort of relation between them because they are paired together. Okay. Just like we can say number negative three is the female in the relationship and four is the male. Okay. They're paired together. They're in a relationship. They're in a relation. Okay. Another way to describe a relation is a mapping diagram. Okay, we could put all those numbers in a box to the left and all the numbers in a box to the right. We could say, okay, negative three chooses four, three chooses negative one, four chooses negative one and three. Uh oh. Okay, four chooses negative one and three, but that's okay. It's still related. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me, that was terrible. All right, let's continue to talk about how we can describe or how we can write relations. Okay, how can we write relations? Those are two ways. The third way is a table of values. We can put relations in a table in math. Okay, we can say negative 3, 4, 3, negative 1, 4, negative 1, 4, 3. Or we can put in a graph and we can graph all those ordered pairs. If you look at those four different ways that I just described to you, they're all the same numbers. Okay, three, ne three, negative three, four shows up right here, right here, right here, and right here. Okay, all those relations are the same. We just write them differently. If I tell you to represent the relation in a graph, that means I just want you to graph the numbers. Okay, if I say represent the relation in a mapping diagram, that means I want you to do number two. Draw bubbles and put in the numbers and draw arrows to connect them. It's the same thing, just different ways to write them. Okay, just like we talked about before, you can go hunting and you can take a gun and a bow. Okay, you get to choose which way you shoot the deer, but the end result is the same thing, dead deer. Okay. Let's keep going. Now, a domain, okay, is what we call all the x values, okay, all the independent variables. So in our relationship, we said before, we said all the girls are the domain, okay. The girls in the school of Buckeye Career Center are the domain, okay. Sets of inputs or x values of an ordered pair within a relation, 
graphically read from left to right. Okay, domain. Arrange is a set of outputs or y values of an order pair within a relation. Okay, basically it's just all the boyfriends at Buckeye Career Center that the girls have chosen. Okay, the domain is all the girls in Buckeye Career Center. The range is all the girls who have chosen a boyfriend. All the boy, all the guys in Buckeye Career Center who have a girlfriend. Okay, that's the do, that's the range, domain and range. So let's look at this example, and there's the answer. I'm going to go ahead and erase the answer for you so that we can do it again. Identify the domain and range of the following. So we have all these, all these x values, or we'll call them girls. We know that domain has to be the girls or the x values. Okay, so I have 3, 7, negative 2, 1, and negative 6. And the way I would write that down is domain. Okay, and the way I represent a set of data or a set of information in math is I make those little squiggly brackets. Okay, and that looks not very good that. So I have 3, 7, negative 2, 1, negative 6. That is my domain. Those are the numbers that are in the domain. And my range is all the guys at 8. Okay, all the guys that these girls chose at 8. We have 10, 1, 4, and negative 3. And 1, Okay. Now, if we wanted to represent these correctly, we would put them in order. Okay, so you would actually want to go ahead, once you have them written out, you want to rewrite them in order. Well, from the smallest to largest, so I want to go ahead and put it negative 6, negative 2, 1, 3, 7. And that would be my final, final answer. That would be the correct way to finish it off. Same thing with your range. I think I'm missing a range, aren't I? I should have five. I forgot six. Let's go back and fix that. I need a number six. Now let's continue. My range would be in order negative three, one, four, six, ten. And there's my range. Any questions? Let's move on. Now, a specific type of relation, okay, called a function, okay, a specific type of relation called a function. That is when, okay, each domain has only one number that's his range. When a girl is dating only one guy, okay, he cannot date two guys, okay, that is called a function, okay. A girl who doesn't cheat on her boyfriend, that's called a function. Okay, girl who doesn't date two guys, that's called a function. Okay, what does this mean? The x value can only choose one y value from the range. Not two, not three, just one. If that happens, we have a function. So, questions to ask yourself to determine if the relation is a function. Did the x values repeat? If no, then yes, it is a function. If yes, ask the question, did the x value choose the same y value? Okay, so let's look at my example here. Is this a function? What do I ask myself? Did the x values repeat? Well, yes, they did. If you look, we have two, one, right here. Okay, and if they did, ask the question, did the x value choose the same y value? Did the x value choose? Well, yeah, they both chose four. So is it a function? Yes, it is. If it chooses the same y value, then it is a function. Yes. Now let's talk about another example of how to tell if it's a function or not. Who in your class or this class wants to eat ice cream? Well, since I don't have a class and I'm making this video without a class, I'm going to say, okay, okay, 10 people want to eat ice cream. Oops. Ten people want to eat ice cream. Who in the class wants to eat candy? Oh, okay, four people. I'm making this number up too because there's nobody in front of me right now. Four people want to eat candy. So now let's look at this. Since everyone chose either ice cream or candy, we are a function. 
okay? As a class, you are the domain. You're everything that's in here, and you get to choose candy or ice cream. Okay, you can't choose both, because if you choose to eat candy and ice cream, you are not a function. You are only allowed to have one. Okay, your range is ice cream and candy, and you can't have both. Only one. Okay? Who wants to eat both? Since people in here have chosen both ice cream and candy, we are not a function. That's if you choose both. Okay, do you understand how the domain is? Every student sitting in the class. Range is what you choose to eat. If you choose both, you're not a function. Okay, if you, everybody chooses one or the other, you are a function. You cannot have both. It is a relation of function. Now, you have to get out a sheet of paper and write this down. I'm going to collect it tomorrow for points. Is this relation a function? Pause the video and then decide. Make sure you ask the question to yourself. Did the X repeat? Now let's talk about this relation. Is this relation a function? I'm going to go ahead and do this one for you. Now, this one is not a function. Why? Because I have to look at every girl and make sure she chose only one guy. Well, let's look here. My domain is 4, 8, 1, 6, and 4. Okay, I just looked at all the x values. Okay, do any of them repeat? Yes, I have 4 and 4. That's the other one. Okay, 4 and 4. Did the 4 choose the same y? No, she did not. She chose a negative one in the beginning, and then she chose a one. Not a good situation. It is not a function. Did the x repeat? Yes, it repeated. Did it choose the same y? No, four chose both one and negative one. We do not have a function. Let's move on. Is this relation a function? I want you to put this one on your blank sheet of paper. This is number two on your blank sheet of paper. Ask the question, did the x repeat? Does each x choose only one y? Okay, can each x choose only one y? Did that happen? This is number two. You should have three answers. Number one, number two, and number three. Once you have your answer for number two, let's move on. Let's go to number three. Number three. Oh, there's the answer. Let's do another one. Actually, if you watched the video, you just saw the answer. And you can go ahead and have the answer for number three. If you watched all the way to the end of the video, I'm going to give you a point. Okay? If you look at this order set of order pairs, this relation, is it a function? Yes. It has negative seven is with 14. Nine is with negative seven. 14 is with seven, and seven is with 14. The x's do not repeat. No x did not repeat, so yes, it must be a function. Okay, so now you know how to tell if it's a function or not, if you have a set of order pairs, a table, or a mapping diagram. How do you know if it's a function if you have a graph? Remember, there's four ways to represent a relation. Ordered pairs, a mapping diagram, an XY table, and a graph. Well, we've talked about the ordered pairs, the mapping diagram, the XY table, and now let's talk about the graph. To check it in the graph, you need to know the vertical line test, the test used to determine whether a relation is a function. This test is to make sure the x values choose only one y. Well, let's look at the following line. We have the blue line here. Okay, we have the blue line. Is the blue line a function? Well, how do I know? Do you see my vertical line that I have? Yes, you see my vertical line. Move your vertical line across the graph. You can use your pencil or your pen. And if the pencil or pen or vertical line hits the graph ever in more than one place, as you can see here, it hits the graph here, or that line here and here. That means this X right here is dating this guy and this guy. No, no, no. That is not a function. You cannot date more than one person. Okay, let's try another one. If I have this graph, is this a function? 
take our vertical line. Let's take our vertical line and move it about. Does it ever hit the red line more than once? No. So that is a function. Now you know what a function is and what it isn't. Any questions? Ask me tomorrow. Your homework is the functions and vertical line test worksheet, and we will work on that in class tomorrow.